Hello and welcome back. Today we are here with the one and only Freely the Banana Girl. You have not only been a major inspiration and influence in my vegan journey, but countless others. You are a vegan activist, speaker, and author. Originally from Australia, currently 41 years old, and thriving on a raw vegan frugivore life in the jungle in Ecuador. You have written three eBooks mm. and run a very successful YouTube channel or YouTube channels with just under a million subscribers where you talk about health, a fruit-based diet and a vegan lifestyle. Hello, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> it's so good to have you here. Let's dive into the questions. How long have you been vegan and what was the motivating factor that inspired you to adopt this way of living? I've been vegan since um, January, 2007. So it's been like almost, I think that's 16 years, like or 15 and a half years. And um, I should say, firstly, I went plant-based because it was about my health. It wasn't about animals and veganism is about animals. So um, what inspired me to go, I guess, plant-based to begin with was health issues. I had so many health issues, um, skin problems, chronic fatigue syndrome, IBS, uh, like, uh, geez, what else? depression, a whole lot of like illness, basically. So that was definitely a motivating factor. I wanted to feel good. I tried all the diets out there and I'm like, I felt like this was really it. And it really was. And um, soon after that, I watched Earthlings, the documentary Earthlings. If you haven't seen it, go and watch it now. Google it on YouTube. It's just a real eye opener. And then I went vegan because veganism is about animals. So yeah, it's been 15 and a half years. And so you lost 40 pounds. How long did this take and what healing in your body took place? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, weight loss, obviously, that was a, a thing as well. And um, yeah, I lost 40 pounds. It took like, initially, like the first year when I went vegan, I actually fasted. So I starved myself for 30 days, like not consecutively, but throughout the course of the year, I was going on these fasts. I was like, I have to clean my body. I have to fast and not eat anything. And it was, it was crazy. So that affected my, my weight loss because, you know, it affected my metabolism. So it took around three years for my, my weight to stabilize. It was going up and down and up and down. And then finally around three years, it, it came down. And now I've been the same weight for over 11 years. So it's been, yeah. It's been a long time. I, I forgot you're down there. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you, but I'm looking at the camera. So, hey, everybody. But, hey, I want to look, talk to Deanna as well. <laughs> so, but, um, yeah, yeah. So, so it's been 11 years. 11 years, the same weight. And it took around three years for it to stabilize when I first went vegan. Okay. Fruit-based vegan too. And you've been such an inspiration, obviously, to me and to so many people freely. You really are a oh, leader and you. a game changer. And and you've saved countless animals lives and humans lives so since you are such an inspiration to so many people and beings who is your inspiration thank you for that yeah. thank you very much I mean honestly I just started this this journey you know trying to heal myself and I got such great results that I was like I want to share this with the world. You know what I mean? So if I can also, you know, inspire others like yourself and help the animals and help save human lives. And like, that's just a huge, huge bonus. So just sharing, you know, what has really worked for me and what's been just a really passionate thing in my life. But um, to answer your question, uh, I mean, I find inspiration all around me all day in nature, friends, family, haters, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I find inspiration in so many things, but if I was to say one human in particular would be who's well known to um, Tony Robbins. He has had a huge impact on my life. He, yeah, he actually had some influence in me going fruit based as well, believe it or not, because he was actually talking about raw food being really healthy and um, great for mental clarity and everything like that. And I'm like, I'm looking into this, you know, that was part of the reason I looked into it because of Tony Robbins. And um, he also inspired me to ride across Australia solo, uh, 40 days, all by myself in the middle of winter. Um, yeah, so he was a huge inspiration. He was in my earbuds the whole time, you know, motivating me. And I would say he's probably been, you know, the most motivating human in my life so wow. far. Oh, I did not. But my family, I have. I have really motivating like friends and family too, you know, it's just different. <laughs> right, 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 right. 
Okay, so since going vegan, you have walked through many stages of it. Raw vegan, then mostly raw with a cooked vegan dinner that you coined raw till four. And now you are raw vegan again, eating predominantly the fruit you grow on your property. You also live away mm. from a lot of pollution, like noise pollution, air pollution. What changes did you notice physically and emotionally during each stage? Um, I mean, I would, I wouldn't say I've jumped around that much, you know, I've been fruit based that entire time, but I've been from, you know, raw till four, which is eating fruit for breakfast, fruit for lunch, and then having like a cooked high carb vegan dinner, you know, low fat, high carb vegan dinner and all raw, the fruit of all diet is eating fruit all day, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, with the addition of maybe greens and nuts and seeds, maybe not every day maybe every day, you know, like it just, it doesn't include any cooked meal. So it's always been breakfast and lunch. that has been fruit. So it hasn't been a huge shift, but uh, the difference between those two, if that's what you're kind of getting out, you know, raw to four and raw vegan. Um, sure. It's not a huge difference. It's not a huge difference, but it is big enough to warrant pursuing, you know, to do it. it the results are like are good enough for me for me to want to, you know, constantly go for that as the, you know, the standard to reach. Um, I think uh, skin is even clearer. Energy is higher, just so much higher. Digestion is definitely better. It's flawless. It's just incredible. And I came from a history of IBS, um, really bad digestive issues. That was one of the main reasons I actually came to plant-based vegan you know, plant-based and eventually vegan um, lifestyle is because of my digestion. It was terrible. I, I was seeing um, all sorts of specialists, you know, gastroenterologists who charged me over $200 for a 15 minute consult. And um, all he could say to me, you know, I ended up getting a, an endoscopy and all he could say was, um, oh yeah, we discovered that you have inflammation of the gut. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I pretty much knew that at my gut sore, you know what I mean? Like I, it feels inflamed, you know, what can we do about it? And he's like, but don't worry, we have this new drug coming out. We have this new drug. It's in America. It's going to come here soon. And I'll just write you another drug in the meantime. And I'm like, I, I don't want any more of your drugs. I don't want this anymore. You know what I mean? I've been living this lifestyle with this, having medication and stuff, and it's not working. It's making me more ill. And um, yeah, that was a huge, huge uh, motivator to come to this lifestyle. And initially it was, I was fully raw as well. I was um, raw vegan to begin with. And the healing was just so quick. I'm like, I've been suffering for years unnecessarily. Like when I didn't know the answer was so simple, you know, because we are frugivores and our body thrives on fruit, on a fruit-based diet. You know, anatomically, physiolog physiologically, we are frugivores. So it makes sense. The more fruit we have in our diet, the healthier we, we will be. So that happens with me too. The more fruit I eat in my diet, so when I cut out that cooked meal, just the healthier I am in all parameters. It may not be a huge leap from raw to four because I'm still having a lot of fruit on raw to four, but it is, it is noticeable. That's interesting. Um, one of the reasons I ask this question is because a lot of the guests that have been on my show and me personally, um, the closer I get to eating a raw diet and obviously whole food plant-based, um, mm -hmm. and then doing that and actually living that way. And, and the guests on my show have said that it's been such a, a major life shift for them that the trajectory, it changes the trajectory of their lives, how food affects every single area of our lives. And so it changes us physically, so emotionally, true. um, spiritually. It got, I felt like I got closer to God and, and yeah. others and other animals and creatures and, and the earth. It's, it's such a profound, um, and I don't hear a lot of vegans talk about this, how it's, it's a profound difference from when because I grew up eating the standard American diet. So um, yeah, it's, it's definitely cool to hear people actually talk about the other, other than physical benefits, what other benefits there are. So. Oh, spiritually. Yeah, 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 definitely. Oh, wow. Like it's hard to put it into words too. Yeah. But I think everybody understands it once they experience it, you may not be able to put words to it, but we know, <laughs> you know, it's this connection with everything around realizing that we're all one 
and it becomes really that, that feeling becomes stronger and stronger like the more raw we are I feel yeah for sure what is some advice you can give to somebody who may be thinking about going raw or living living food and how do you do mm. it traveling do you still travel well not since the whole yes <laughs> pandemic no not not since that um <laughs> so we haven't done a lot of traveling but in the past <laughs> in the past I have I have traveled a lot and done this lifestyle no problem at all um like shameless plug here but if you want to do the lifestyle properly you know check out my books seriously just because you know I, I've condensed um you know nearly 16 years or so like at the time when I wrote this book it wasn't that many years but many many years over a decade into these books of um experience so then you don't have to make the same mistakes that I did it's all in here and um I'm very proud of these books and it, it does it it works and I show you exactly how meal planners you know recipes everything like that so firstly, something that is huge, something is a huge, huge thing is eating enough fruit. It's very simple. It's a very simple concept. You need to eat enough. And, and a lot of people, this is how most people fail because it is difficult. We don't live in this. We live in a concrete jungle. We don't live in like the fruit forest, you know, or I do. <laughs> That's what I'm creating. But, um, you know, most people live in a concrete jungle. So there isn't, you know, you can't just go outside and pick fruit off the tree and everything like that. You have to go to the supermarket, it can be expensive and all that, but you need to prioritize your health first and foremost. It needs to be number one, like over everything. And it, if you find it expensive, then you need to cut back in other areas, whether it be like a lot of women, um, uh, you know, having makeup, wearing makeup. And um, if you cut that out of your, your life, it's, you're going to save a lot of money right there um movies coffee you know starbucks and eating out it, like there's so many things we spend oh secondhand clothing making your own clothing you know these are the ways that we can save money and then we can put that money towards what we really should be putting it towards and that is eating um our species specific diet or as close to it as we can and eating fruits living foods healthy foods so we're actually healthy ourselves so i definitely recommend that um Eating enough, <laughs> going back to your question, eating enough is just number one and traveling. Um, it's like when you prioritize your health and when you prioritize eating this way, it, it just, you find a way to make it work. You know, like for instance, on the plane, just take dates, either fast, you know, don't eat. You know, most people don't spend that much time on the plane that they have to eat. But if you do, if you, you smell in the cooked crap that they're, they're serving on the plane and you need to eat something then um carb up before you go on the plane you have a big smoothie smoothie I mean like look at this like this is my one nice. <laughs> um huge <laughs> it's got like 10 bananas in it um have a smoothie but take dates dates are the ultimate fast food or date and coconut rolls you can get those in a lot of places depending on where you live but you can make them yourself, blended date and coconut, basically. That's it. They're delicious. Um, have things that are tasty that you like. Uh, it's all about just being prepared and prioritizing, really, really realizing that your health is everything. It is so important. If you're not healthy, you can't give to others. You can't care about the animals, the environment nothing you can't you know like if you don't have the energy and the health and the vibrancy within yourself then you can't give to others so yeah prioritizing will help you then organize in order you know to do this while you're traveling you know where there's a will there's a way yep for sure I remember that sure. yeah I, i've traveled all over the world and i've eaten whole food plant-based and oil-free sugar-free and it's i mean africa <laughs> europe like all over the world. <laughs> yeah. And so you made it a priority. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You can do it and you ask people at the places you're staying at or the locals, like, where's the nearest organic food? Yeah. Market? There's always like an organic food mart that has tons of organic fruit. So that's um, right. Yeah. And like, it's, it's like a box of bananas, you know, like it's worth to just wherever you end up where, where you're traveling or even call, like if you've got a friend that you're about to stay with, ask them to buy a box of bananas for you box of bananas or a box of dates or have something ready um even like a week early so they ripen up um 
you know, there's all things, you know, I talk about a lot in the books, but um, yeah, there's ways, obviously, if you prioritize. You moved to the middle of the jungle in Ecuador from Australia. Please tell us about what inspired this major life event, all about the property <laughs> and how you found it. Well, I don't know if you're aware, but I'm back in Australia. <laughs> I'm actually back, back that's in Australia. right, because of the time difference. Right, yeah. right, right. So what yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, I did, we did move to Ecuador and um, it was a crazy adventure. It was seriously, we were about to buy a house, about to buy land. It was all set up. We were actually staying in the property. Um, we hadn't paid yet, but the owner had, was kind enough to allow us to kind of get a feel for it, you know, and stay in his house, in his house, not with him while he's there, but us by ourselves on the land. So we did that and um, actually had a few dodgy experiences because things work differently over there and there was a family that had been living there for like 10 years okay they've been living there for 10 years looking after the place and that's how they do it over there but we didn't want to live with the family yeah you know and as sad as that is you know it's just reality you know we want to have our own privacy and everything like that so they had to move and they were actually quite angry about it and um the son came back a number of times and tried to steal from us, tried to break in at night. And I, I, it, was, it was terrifying for me because I didn't know it was only a 12 year old, um, but I saw like some hands outside my window once and um, some hands and feet and kind of, I couldn't tell if it was an adult and I, I just freaked out. It was like 1 a.m. because I heard some like scratching and um, I'm like, Rowan, get, uh, get the, um, with the machete go and get the machete and then the person ran off and then my partner ran after him and then it was just the next day you, you know there was a whole lot of drama much much drama and we didn't feel safe you know we started to feel this isn't very safe uh we we heard horror stories of people actually being killed and you always being seen as like the the rich westerner basically you know and all of these kind of feelings and experiences um contributed to us leaving and coming back to Queensland and finding that this place in um, North Queensland in the tropics where we live now. Um, but things are going great. Um, I can tell you about this place. Yes, uh, tell me about this place. Yeah, it's, about, got <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's about 12 acres um, and it's like the usable land, you know, is like a certain amount. I mean, like there's some, you know, rainforest and everything, and we keep that obviously. And um, we plant out the rest. We've planted hundreds, hundreds of trees, probably over a thousand fruit trees. So, you know, we want it to be, we want to be able to live off the land. You know, we, we saw society going down this dystopian, in this dystopian direction, right? In this direction we did not like. Uh, we did not feel that the future was looking bright as far as, you know, living in the city, which is what I've always done since I, when I came from the country, actually. I, I um, grew up in the country, but then I moved to the city and I had been to the, in the city ever since and then moved here. So, we, yeah, we just decided it was time. We had to do this and um, we need to try to feed ourselves, you know, take our own uh, food respond you know into our own hands our food um you know like security. where we get our food from yeah yeah security that's the word i'm looking for yeah security so um yeah like uh, it's a jungle here it's very hard sometimes i'm not gonna like pretend it's just so so easy and everything is just like this dreamy magical life in the rainforest you know, it may come across like that sometimes, you know, social media you know, <laughs> kind of lends itself to that. But like, you know, I want people to know that it is tough. It is tough. I've had some, you know, experiences where I've been stung by these awful black ants where I had this, you know, terrible reaction to them. A tar tree, I sat on this tree that was sapping this toxic tar and it basically uh, left this huge wound on my backside which her, it was some of the most excruciating pain I've ever had for weeks and weeks. And um, there's other, there's a lot of toxic things going on, you know, like insects and animals and all that, but it's so worth it at the same time. Like it's really, really worth it because 
I feel like I've come home. You know what I mean? I feel like this is where I'm meant to live. You know, I'm, I'm a frugal, I'm a fruit eating animal. I'm not meant to be living out of like a supermarket, you know, shopping in a supermarket. I'm meant to be picking fruit off the tree, living near the fruit, uh, caring for the fruit trees, you know, being part of nature. And this is where I feel my best, eat regardless of all the challenges. The challenges are just life, you know, that's got to accept it. Mm. That's so cool. So it's this property in Australia, did it come with mm. a house or like shelter or did you have to build that? Oh, no, it's, it's come with something. So we're okay. Okay. We're okay in that regard. But, you know, in the future, we probably look at, you know, making something better. Okay. You know, like it's not, it's not like some mansion, that's for sure. <laughs> and like, I kind of keep it to, to ourselves, you know, because we want some space that is like, sacred to us you know a lot of people like oh I want a house tour but it's like well some things we want to keep private to ourselves Mm -mm -mm. okay okay and then did you plant most of the trees there or did did the property come with a bunch of fruit trees already it actually had some it had some fruit trees it had some breadfruit like massive massive breadfruit actually you know a fair bit of fruit but in the scheme of things like you need to have many fruit trees in order to get a consistent flow of fruit and to be able to eat the volume necessary to thrive, you know, on a fruit-based diet, you know, you need to have a lot of fruit trees. You need to plant a lot. Um, so we had like red fruit already here, some mango, which doesn't really fruit that well here because of um, the time when, when it rains, the flowers are out and we get kind of like monsoon rain and that affects the um, setting of the fruit. Mm. So mango doesn't fruit so well here. We have lychee. We got one li- single lychee in five My years, favorite. which was <laughs> one lychee though. <laughs> <We're just> one, <laughs> one little lychee. See, it, it, it needs chill hours. Lychee needs cold, um, a cold temperature, like a cold snap. And we don't get that here. So it doesn't fruit so well. You know, these are the challenges. Um, a couple of big durians, which the cockatoos have eaten, you know, the small amount of durians that we've got off these big durians. There's another challenge. Um, and heaps of bananas. Oh, like bananas were already here. So there was a, there was a bit, there was a bit, but we have planted so much more. It's just like, you just got to plant, plant, plant and hope for the best. <laughs> and so it, it, guesstimate, how many fruit trees do you have now? Gosh, I don't know. It could be over a thousand, <gasps> I reckon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I reckon. Like, you. And we're always, we're, yeah, we're always just throwing seeds everywhere. You know what I mean? Like even in the surrounding forests and everything, just throwing seeds and like gorilla planting. You know what I mean? Like so, in areas that they're not, it's not our our land. You know what I mean? But it's it's the people's land in my opinion you know what I mean so we we throw seeds on there and you know because we've got to we've got to prepare for the future and imagine they grow up you know all over the place and you know everybody can have food your power comes from solar panels and your water comes from the creek and so how Mm. what solar panels do you use and how much power comes from those solar panels all the all the power all the power we don't have a generator or anything all the power comes from the sun from the solar panels we only have like in operation about six or something at the moment um and that's enough you know we power freezer uh what else like all the lights and the internet and all the things we need we power no problem um you know there's a lot of sun here there's a lot of sun And um, the water is coming from our creek. We have a creek running alongside and it comes from, it's like a mountain stream. It comes from like up the mountain. There's no properties up there to, you know, pollute the water before it gets to us. So it's very clean. We also have a filter though. We have like a sediment filter. We have an extra filter. So we're still, you know, because animals poop and pee in there and Mm -hmm. there's all sorts of other contaminants that might be in there. So we do also have a couple of filters. So and yeah, that's how it's going. Do you run it through the filter before you drink it? So you take it from the creek and then you run it through the filter? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's like an automatic process. And my partner's like kind of set up, you know, this automatic, you know, filter, just a filter there that it goes through and then cool. and then we might put it in an extra filter. Yeah. So you have pipes and stuff. 
Yeah, yeah, we have pipes. <laughs> oh, look at you guys. And you and your you got it. You got to do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you got it. You yeah. I mean, a lot was already set up too. You know, so but you got to you got to do that if you want to live off grid. If you want to be independent from the system, you know that wants you to pay for everything, be dependent on everything, and like pay for water that is just somewhat toxic, right? Like that is in these pipes, old toxic pipes and I don't know you know like that's a whole other discussion mm -hmm. but um yeah if you want to be independent you got to be resourceful you know you gotta you gotta make it happen and that's what we're doing out here we're we're trying to make it happen and it is it is happening do you have um plastic pipes or copper pipes what type of pipes do you have um I think we have both yeah we have both okay. actually copper and and plastic yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. are you looking to do it in your own Country. No, no. I'm just curious about no. how, like how you're setting this up and, and for, to give information to anybody who wants to live this way, some tips and mm -hmm. tricks, because we learn from yeah, each other. Great. Right. So I just want to make exactly. sure that exactly. the audience is like, I think for the audience, I'm like, what would the audience ask right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask, like what type of pipe yeah. she has. You reside with and care for the property with your boyfriend. What are some lessons you've learned mm -hmm. about effective communication and staying committed to one another while working and being in such an isolated and oftentimes challenging setup? Wow. Mm. Yeah, it definitely can be challenging on a relationship. Honestly, people living out here, we've heard of many many relationships actually who like they've been fine and they moved out here and then they broke up and then they moved. <laughs> So, yeah, because it can be a strain on a relationship. That's just, that's just how it is, you know, and you do need certain coping mechanisms. You need to put certain, you know, things in place to make it work. And that's, we do do that as much as possible. We definitely have our challenges. We're both spicy people. We're both quite fiery <laughs> and passionate and about our viewpoint, right? You know? mm -hmm. And for me, it's like, I really try to let go of, you know, the need to be right, you know, the need to be like, oh, I'm right, you're wrong, like that kind of mentality, you know what I mean? Like that is very destructive and it can, you know, it just, it doesn't make the other person feel good either when what they're proven to be wrong or something. So I try to let go of that. Uh, if we're having a tense moment, uh, I try to walk away, just walk away. Mm -hmm. and I think this can apply to people living in a city as well obviously but it's harder to walk away in the city isn't it you know you don't really have much space here it's easy you know um it when you spend this much time with someone like we do we are like basically 24 7 together yeah. it, it puts a strain on it but it does put a strain on it but we are very committed to each other at, at the same time and we do have a lot of fun you know, it's important to dance too. We, we love capoeira music. So we often pump the capoeira music and dance together, you know, and, and that brings a bonding. Yeah. Yeah. Like if we've had a bad time, we always apologize. He apologizes to me. I apologize to him. Like we, we get over it as well. You know, don't stress the small stuff, get over it. Mm. You know, there's too much focus on like just little things that don't need the attention, you know? So we try to, just focus on what really matters and that is um, surviving out here and um, that we love each other, that we're best friends and that we speak to each other as best friends rather than, you know, like sometimes you can feel, you say things that you're just like, wow, I can't believe I said that. And we both feel like that sometimes. So that's just human nature. Mm -hmm. And overall we're doing very, very well. And we're like, kids together a lot of the time playing dancing to the capoeira and so definitely cute. making it work because it's we've been six years six years together now so you have a composting toilet who cleans it yes how is it cleaned <laughs> and please tell us about this process and and all the benefits yeah the, the composting toilet is amazing it's just um a frame and it has a bucket and we poop into the bucket and we have like uh mulch you know mulch from the forest or some soil or something like that and we just put it on top and there's absolutely no smell no smell at all it's amazing uh we just do that we fill it up and then we take it out to uh, an area in the garden and uh, maybe under the bananas 
under the bananas, under fruit trees. We don't put on greens because that's a little bit, you know, cross contaminate or like contaminating kind of risk there maybe. And um, yeah, we put on the fruit trees and then we put some like leaves over the top, some banana leaves or something like that. And then it just breaks down and it feeds the banana and then the banana feeds us and then we poop again and then we put it back and it's that cycle, you know, like a perfect closed cycle. Uh, um, the, the poop isn't going into the ocean. It's not being flushed. You know, it's not going in into the sewer and then pumped into the ocean, piped into the ocean. Like, you know, what's happening with flushable toilets in, in society which is just terrible to waste all that amazing, well, some people are eating crap, so, <laughs> and, uh, you know, taking all sorts of drugs and stuff like that, so it's not so great, but it's still a real waste of resources. And so do you, do you guys take turns in, in cleaning it and dumping it, or is there, like, one specific person <laughs> who does the poop, cleans the poop? No, no, no. It's like sometimes the poop can get heavy, yeah. Like if it's maybe really full, maybe really full, yeah. Snoopy might take it. Um, but generally it's like, you know, we share it, whoever's around at the time. And I always fill up the, the, uh, the compost, uh, like this, sorry, the, um, the mulch, you know, or the soil that we put on top, you know, or we use some sawdust or something like that. I always fill that up and, you know, I often take the bucket out as well. So it's a shared thing. And do you like, do you have a hose? Do you like spray it down or put some soap in there or something? To, to Oh yeah. 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 Sorry. I didn't really go into that kind of detail, but um, yeah, we have, we have a hose. We don't use soap. We don't use soap. We might use um, like, that's the thing. Like people probably think it is kind of disgusting or something like that. Like, Oh, you're not using soap on the bucket. Like how's it going to be clean? But when you have these fluffy fruity floaters, like fiber filled poops, <laughs> like we do, really really just uh water soluble kind of like they're not oil based poops you know a lot of people in society are having these like really oily poops you know because they're eating a lot of like oily fatty junk um but ours is like we don't have any oil in our diet it's like a low fat diet just an adequate fat diet and um you know it doesn't it doesn't like it's just like when you're washing plates and stuff and it has oil residue you know from cooking with oil that's hard to get off right you need to have some sort of degreaser you know you need some sort of soap so with these boobs you don't you know it's water and it just comes straight off and we use maybe a bit of a leaf to like help it and it's clean it's it's very it's very very simple and minimal cleaning is involved it's really amazing compared to normal toilet. Cool. Well, thank you for, for diving in and not feeling embarrassment to talk about that. I think it's going to, it's going to be oh. and interesting to a lot of people. So <laughs> nothing really embarrasses me. I know. I know your personality. <laughs> I think, I think I know your personality from what you have in, in your videos. Um, and well, I, I used to be, I your used to be very, very, well, I used to be a really shy, embarrassed child. Really? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Like ma massively grew up very shy, very self-conscious, very unconfident. And yeah, this, this lifestyle actually helped a lot with that because I started to like really like myself. I'm like, for the first time in my life, I'm like, Hey, I, I, I think I'm a pretty good person. You know, like I like who I am and you know, I started to yeah, just be healthy mentally, you know? So that's another unintended uh, benefit there. Nice. So let's talk more about hygiene, living in the wild. How do you wash? Um, do you use toothpaste, mm. shampoo, conditioner, sunscreen, or moisturizer, your body, face, and also insect repellent? So I can, I know that's, that's a lot lumped in. So maybe we'll talk about toothpaste, shampoo, right. conditioner first. Yeah, yeah. Toothpaste, um, I do use a natural toothpaste. Like maybe not every night. Like it just depends. But I, I clean my teeth generally twice a day. Um, floss, uh, toothpaste. Uh, but a natural one, not these like Colgate, you know, chemical filled ones that have like all sorts of stuff in it that you don't need and that are not beneficial for your health at all. Um, detrimental. Uh, so yes, uh, shampoo. So I'm not sure if you know about my little combo, my shampoo, conditioner, bicarb soda combo, but it's really good. Like it's honestly like I play with my hair a bit because I'm so shocked at how healthy and long it is these days compared to how it was. It was just dry and like, you know, I was dying it. I don't diet anymore or anything. 
Um, so that helps a lot, but it, it's, it's way healthier. And I use this bicarb soda mix. So everybody watching, try this at home. It's like, I recommend it. Uh, I, I think it's going to be fine on your hair. I haven't heard anything bad about it, but um, a tablespoon of bicarb soda, a few squirts of lime or lemon and a little bit of water. You mix it into like a shampoo consistency and wet your hair, put that on, leave it on, kind of move it around. It feels a little bit sandy, a little bit gritty, but um, move it around a bit and leave it for like maybe 30 seconds to a minute. Wash it out, wash it good. So you can really feel it's like squeaky clean kind of feeling. And it just like brings it out like really shiny. And I mean, I think it's also diet related, but um, it's, it's amazing. I've never had a shampoo conditioner combo like this in my life. And it costs like what, 50 cents or less. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like bicarb right. soda is like very cheap. Mm -hmm. So that's what I use. Uh, when it comes to sunscreen, I do not use any sunscreen. I haven't used sunscreen for a long, long time. And I'm, I'm, I'm like a freckly, fair, fair skinned individual. So, I mean, I don't use it, but um, I, I allow the fruit basically to provide protection for me. Uh, not only that, you know, I'm smart about not going out in the sun, you know, too long and getting burnt. It's never healthy to get burnt, but just stay out of the sun at those times or cover up rather than slather on this chemical icing, basically, you know, a lot of the sunscreen is quite toxic. Do you think that's such a good name for it? Chemical icing. Called. <laughs> that's basically what you're doing, right? You're icing yourself with chemicals. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, great. So the chemical icing. <laughs> the chemical, no chemical icing. You know, you don't need it. Just like, like the better carotene, the carotenoids in the fruit is actually very protective. It gives like a natural SPF of... I think it's about 10, I, like, I don't know exactly. It's quite good. It's quite good. And you will get more of a natural tan on this lifestyle, uh, like a little, a, a bit of a glow going on if you go out in the sun and it'll be harder for you to get sunburnt because of the beta carotene. It's, it's pretty crazy. I, I do know a lot more about it, but I don't want to say things that I'm, I'm a bit unsure of, but it is very, it's very protective. Mm -hmm. Um, but still don't go out and get yourself burnt for sure for sure um and then insect anything repellent. else oh what about insect repellent yes and the insect repellent uh yes i do use that really it is necessary here at some times of the year it's like a lemon scented tea tree oil that's that's the main base of it it's really good try it you, lemon scented tea tree oil I, yeah, yeah, make it. Okay. Um, yeah, that's that's the basic mix of it. Lemon scented tea tree oil, maybe some lavender in there. And it works. It works very well. And um, yeah, I recommend that. I was going to say also a cup. Get a cup. Get a like a um, menstrual cup. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. See, I, I use a menstrual cup. I've used it for almost the whole time that I've been fruit-based. So almost like 15 years, I've been using a menstrual cup and it's this like silicone kind of uh, latex, or uh, I'm not exactly sure the material, um, but they, they, they vary a bit. Sometimes they're rubber as well, but it is it's so good for the environment. Um, so good for your body as well. You don't have to stick up this, you know, the tampon, which is dry and like, I, I never used to like wearing them. You know, it was always just for me uncomfortable and gross when you take it out. But this way, when you take it out, it's in a cup. The blood is just in the cup and then you just can put it in the garden. Or if you're in the city, you have to put it down the toilet, I guess, or a pot plant. Uh, but it's, it's a really good investment, these, these cups. And it'll last you for years. Like I had one for like 10 years or something. And it's still great. And then you just clean it with, with water or back in the day, soap and water. Yeah, you can you can use the soapy water if you want. Uh, it's it's fine, you know. Just get it clean and um, just don't put chemicals on it. I, I do have we do have a coconut based soap here. Okay, it's a, um, just solidified coconut oil, basically um, soapified or whatever, so, saponified. I don't know how. Is you it know, like to Dr. make Bronner? it into a soap? So like Dr. Bronner's? No, no, no. It's just a solid a solid bar, oh, and okay. it's I think it's a hundred percent. I think it's 100% coconut oil or coconut based. 
and it's it's quite effective. It's pretty good. That's all we use if we if we ever need anything. Oh, oh, I want to ask you your toothpaste. You said you use a natural toothpaste. Is it like a clay mm. toothpaste? What do you do? You make your own? Do you buy it? What is it? No, I buy this one. I, I think I'm being a little bit lazy on this one. I could definitely make my own, but I'm kind of like, yeah, this one's this one's fine. It's working, yeah. but yeah, I would definitely. You really, you, definitely... you're so funny. You're like, I can use my own <laughs> because you. Like, <laughs> I'm thinking like, oh my goodness, she's doing everything. Like, she's such a. You're doing everything yourself. Like, give yourself a break. Oh, on the thank, you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, but it's true. It's like so easy toothpaste. Like, but thank you. Yeah, I. I never feel like I'm doing enough. I never really do feel like that. But I'm trying to think of the brand. I think it's an Ayurvedic brand. Okay. I think it's quite a common, actually natural Ayurvedic one. And I'm not recommending it as being like super or anything like that. It's just the one I use at this at this time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's getting the job done. Yeah. Um, now I'm thinking too, if somebody asked me what toothpaste I use, I use a, a clay one and it's in a jar. A clay. Oh, okay. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it, something like Miracle toothpaste or something like that. I don't know. I'll have to put in. I'll put in some links in in the description on on what we both use, and if you remember it and you want to text it to me or um, message it to me, and then moisturizer. Do you ever use moisturizer? I never ever use a moisturizer. I can't remember the last time I used one. Wow. It must be like, oh wow, it must be. Um, yeah, it's probably 17 years. Like, honestly, this is crazy. Yeah. I mean, in that time I have used some natural makeups like early on. Now I gave up the makeup, no makeup anymore. Uh, it's, it's amazing when you eat this way because your skin becomes, it produces its own moisture, right? You become very hydrated because you're eating a high water diet. You know, like it's our, our bodies are 70% plus water. So it kind of makes sense that we should be eating foods that are similar to that. And when you have a look at fruits, they are in general, 70% plus water, mm. which is pretty amazing. It's pretty cool, pretty like, you know, connection. Yeah. And it, it shows in your skin too, because you just, everything is easier. Digestion is easier. If you, have, if you eat um, a lot of dry foods, the water has to be pulled from your body, from your skin, you know, from your, your face and the skin on your body to hydrate that food in order to digest it properly. So it's pretty, it's very, very cool. And it's very moisturizing to eat like a fruit raw diet and raw to four fruit based. And you don't like put like, cause I would, I would be like, Oh, I just want a little uh, uh, around the eyes. Like nothing you put anything, <laughs> like on your, on your. Oh, no, I tell you no, 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 absolutely nothing. Nothing. Like what I do is I, I might um, curl my eyelash like that, okay. like <laughs> hold it with the warmth of my fingers and curl it up. Oh, I might put coconut oil on my lips mm. just like that, just to get a bit of a sheen, just okay. a bit of a sheen maybe, but nothing else anywhere else. And that can, you know, be challenging for someone who's come from wearing makeup you know I came from a past of wearing a lot of makeup moisturizer all of that you know and 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 as you get older you know you get some wrinkles and stuff like that and people on the internet are like oh she's getting wrinkles and you know that it becomes pressure to like focus on your appearance and make yourself look as good as possible and the pressure to you know paint yourself like a doll <laughs> and um you know I I've come a long way in that regard, you know, it's, it's kind of difficult at first, but now I'm like, oh, screw it. You know, like I, I don't want to bother with this crap anymore. You know, I've been doing this for too long. I, I want to be, I just want to show my myself, you know, I don't want, I don't want to cover it anymore. You're so beautiful freely inside and out. You, you Oh gosh. <laughs> it's like, it's so cool to see that you're number one, confident enough and you're radiating beauty from, from, inside of you from the food you eat from oh. the lifestyle you live from from what you choose to give out to people you're radiating beauty in your hair and your skin and your heart and your soul and your eyes it's it doesn't look like like I would never think oh freely doesn't have makeup on like that's not the first thing <laughs> I would think of when I look at you right now I think like how beautiful you are thank you radiate. you're making me um, blush now you're making uh, me blush it's the truth, it's <laughs> the truth. <laughs> I really wish like women out there like if you <laughs> The, the females who are watching me, please try it. Try a fruit-based diet. 
it it is life changing. Even for 30 days, you will see differences in your body, in your skin. But remember, if you've come from dieting, like I did, I came from dieting, uh, so much dieting, and so have a lot of women. So you may have some weight gain initially. That is natural. Your body is has got to even out. You know, and it took a couple of years for me to do that for your metabolism to heal. Uh, but just focus on health. Focus on the benefits of like your digestion getting better, your skin getting better, your energy, your mental clarity. So many benefits, and the the weight will just come down eventually. That'll just be an unintended like side effect. Like, it'll just be this thing that happens long term. I mean, I can tell you that I'm coming from the future, <laughs> coming back to tell you now it works. I'm here, like you know, it works, and I've kept this my weight same. I would say within one or two kilos for over 11 years, no drugs, eating as much as I care for, no caffeine, no over-exercising or anything like that. So it, it works. Please give us an example of what you eat on a daily basis and what kind of water you drink. And also how has Dr. Emoto contributed to your practice of water consumption? Mm, Dr. Emoto. Well, actually... I have, oh, well, this is dripping wet, actually. Uh, we are one. This is what it says. This is actually motivated by Dr. Emoto. It says, you are life. These are positive molecule messages because we are made up of, uh, you know, vibrations and molecules. Uh, thank you. I've written here, I love you. So I have all these positive messages on the water bottles because um, what we say to ourselves and how we see the world and the messages that we put out, like it, it definitely affects the water within ourselves, within others, and also within water. You know, we're, we're made up of a lot of water, 70% 70, 70 plus. So if you're going to be mean to yourself, if you're going to be mean to others, basically, or saying nasty things, unwarranted, then, you know, it's going to affect your own vibration, your own health. And that's part of the reason um, that I put it on there. And Dr. Modo definitely motivated me to do that. So Thanks, Doc. <laughs> um, but yeah, and when it comes to food, you saw how big this was. Whoa, this is actually, I've already eaten um, some of this. And uh, this is 10 bananas. It's really heavy. 10 bananas. Um, it has some pumpkin pie fruit, which is like mammy sapoti in it, a, a bit of frozen mammy sapoti and frozen pineapple blended up with water. And it's delicious. It is, it is delicious. We like sweet stuff, right? Humans like sweet stuff. That's why we go for the chocolate bars and the ice cream and cakes and all of that stuff to get the sugar. We want the sugar. We're frugivores. Yeah, we're, we're sugar addicts. <laughs> but, we, but the problem is that people aren't discerning when they eat something. They go for the junk food rather than the whole fresh fruits. That's what the diet should be based on because it's been hidden from us because it doesn't make industries a lot of money, right? It doesn't, the junk food lasts for years. You can have it on the shelf for years and years and years. It's making these industries like countless, countless millions, billions of dollars every year. You know, us choosing this bunker food, you know, that should be put in a bunker, should be a last resort, should be famine food, should be absolute last res resort that we eat it. So I got a bit sidetracked there, but um what I what, what I would eat would be like in general 10 bananas I mean I like to get 10 bananas every day at least 10 bananas in my diet part of the reason I guess I'm called the banana girl <laughs> yes because because I have like a real focus on bananas because it's easy to get easy they're tasty uh cheap generally cheap so everybody everybody can get at least 10 bananas in their in their diet and and anyone, um, everybody watching this, I recommend that you get at least 10 bananas in your diet every day and your, your life will change just by doing that one action because that will take out other less optimal foods and a lot of the time junky foods. That will take that out of your diet and replace it with something very, very healthy. So the bananas, breakfast, and that's around 1,000 calories. And then for lunch, I might have, it depends. It depends what's in season what we can get, you know, from the fruit forest. It's not in full production yet. It, this takes time. It takes real, like a certain amount of time to establish a food forest, a fully, you know, food producing forest. 
that's what the goal is, but it, it takes time. So we still have to shop at markets or uh, trade with people, with friends. Mm. And so it depends on what time, what time of the year it is, what season. I might have mangoes. I might have a meal of mangoes or I might have mangoes mixed with like, can be something like chili, uh, papaya, uh, some greens maybe. It depends. I have heaps of recipes in my books too you know so ideally a mono meal ideally a mono meal but it doesn't have to be a mono meal it can be different fruits mixed together and then for dinner I might have some snacks in between sometimes I have like date and coconut roll mm. and um, you know that might be questionable as whether it's raw if you don't make it yourself but I'm not too you know concerned about that one mm -hmm. uh, dates a date smoothie a daterade strawberry daterade I don't know if you've had that before, but take dates, take about like 20 dates. Oh yeah. I mean, load up on them. 20 days is a lot, but you need that. And a whole lot of frozen strawberries, blend that up with a lot of water and it comes out like a strawberry milkshake. It's crazy good. It's really, really good. I think you asked something about my blood sugar as well. How yeah. do I main, maintain healthy yeah. blood sugar? And, yeah. and some people might be like, oh, that's too much sugar. You know, I am pre-diabetic, you know, that I've got some issues. I can't eat like that this is the best diet for you. Okay. If you have any blood sugar issues, diabetes, type one, type two, and there's a lot of science to back it up as well. This is not me just like trying to promote my own thing or something. Right. Um, you can look into, you can look into my friend's work, mastering diabetes. He is a type you one diabetic. Robbie? Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah, Robbie. 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 Yeah. <laughs> he's great. He he's has, you know, like he's been at it a long time. Yeah. yeah. And his work is amazing. Like, and he, he proves with science that it's not the fruit, you know, causing the issue. It's the excess fat in people's bloodstream that is preventing the sugar, the glucose getting into the cell, preventing the insulin from helping the, the um, glucose get into the cell. And this is why fruit is so good because fructose doesn't even require insulin in order to get into the cell. It has a different pathway. So it's fantastic for blood sugar. It has no impact. It's great. And Another thing about fruit is that the fiber, obviously, and the water content. It's fantastic for blood sugar. And proof of this also is in a recent blood test that I've shown after, I think it was oh, fairly recent, maybe a year ago, after so many years being on this lifestyle, you know, getting my um, uh, average blood sugar over three months, three months, um, which is a HbA1c test, which was easily in the healthy range. No problem at all blood sugar is stable because I have a low fat diet and I have a high fruit diet. It's the way to go. Okay. Look into it. Look into this diet. It, it is amazing if you have blood sugar issues and diabetes is a big, big issue in America. Just, well, I think it's one in three or uh, I don't know. It's very, very high. Prevalent. Yeah. Um, cool. And what's Sorry, your sidetrack? <laughs> What's your all time? Oh, oh, you tell me. What do you think it is? So you've you've said a couple in your videos. You you really like jackfruit. You said jackfruit is your favorite food, but you've also said durian is your favorite food. That, that's that's definitely the highest. Durian is uh, always queen. Oh, it's said to be king of the fruits, but it, it's just wow. Durian. If you haven't tried durian, you need to try durian. And and some people like get excited after I'm excited. They're like, oh, I want to try this, and then they go to the uh, the Asian store or something and they get some frozen durian and they're like oh like it, it tastes like onions and garlic it's like gross but look that is not a good durian that is not right you need to I know it's not possible for everyone to just fly over to Asia but <laughs> yeah you know what I mean like if you one thing that you can do for yourself is to in this life is to try yes. fresh durian it is an incredible experience I would say it is similar to vanilla thickened cream whipped cream mm. it, it it tastes like that and you can get some that tastes like chocolate praline and it's just incredibly good it's incredibly good it's hard to imagine it's a fruit while you're eating it so highly recommend that so the Beautiful. i've had durian a lot and they've always smelled, oh you have <laughs> even like the good ones they smell does the one that tastes yeah yeah like they do the vanilla like the fresh one does that one smell too yeah. Yeah. It smells. Yeah. Oh, okay. it, I mean, it's not, they smell so much. <laughs> you got to get over the smell, but they smell so much that in Thailand, 
And in a lot of Asian countries, they will have a sign saying no durian are allowed. There'll be a durian with like a cross through it. Yeah, you're banned because it smells like a gas leak, basically. <laughs> you know, and obviously that might evacuate thousands of people from like a train station or a hotel or something. So they have to have this ban on it, which is ridiculous too, because, you know, there's animals being cooked all over the place. Yeah. And yeah, no one complains about that. And that's actually toxic to breathe in. Like some of the doctors that I've had on the show so oh. say like Dr. Furman specifically, he's like at a barbecue, like today's Memorial day. And like so many people are going to barbecues today and they're consuming that through their skin, through their, their, wow. nose, their lungs. Like it's toxic. It's toxic. Not really toxic. It, but yeah. Yeah. Around it and to smell it while it's being cooked. Um, mm -hmm. So durian. Yes. I love it. Yes. <laughs> I love it. You asked oh, yeah. me if I, I knew. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> because I thought like, I've been like talking about it so much and yeah, you're a fruit lover yourself. Yes. So what about you? What is your favorite? My favorite food is lychees. And I also, I have 13. Oh, wow. Um, it, in my home outside in the yard and oh, lychees wow. is one of them and they grow in Los Angeles. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah I love lychees. Okay. What is your exercise routine like now? And what do you do for fun? What is my exercise routine? Well, I don't, I wouldn't say I have a routine. Like I, okay. What I do generally is I will go for a jog. I'll, I'll make a video on rising. I mm -hmm. depends, you know, I'm a little bit haphazard, but usually make a video, get that done and then go out for a jog. And that might be around half an hour. And it's kind of like undulating hills. It's not just a flat jog. So that will be it. That will be it for the day as far as running and cardio goes. Then I might come back and do some yoga. I have been doing about half an hour of yoga per day. And that is great. That's life changing. I was becoming like stiff, stiff as a carrot. Seriously, <laughs> just like not, not good. <laughs> so so I needed to get the, the yoga in. And so I've been doing that consistently for a little bit now for a few months. And I would say I average about five days a week where I do this jog, but it's only half an hour. It's not much. It's really not much. And if I, if I, I miss it, so what? It's not a big deal. And other than that, I will work on the land, you know, like pulling out weeds, mm. doing some maybe slashing, slashing some weeds and stuff. And uh sewing <laughs> using my hand sewing mm. uh that, that's about it that's about it it's doesn't get more than that really I don't do any weights or anything anymore I used to do a lot of weights I could probably do some you know more strength work or something like that but at this point it's it's not a priority mm. that's pretty much what I'm doing nice so the last question you've done oh, your you life asked, oh. you, all, you also asked what I do for fun sorry yes 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 yes, yes. what do you do for fun capoeira we dance ca <laughs> yes <laughs> that is that is one thing that is one thing we do dance capoeira um I feel like my life is like really quite fun anyway I don't have this dedicated thing I do for fun I have this high level of feeling happy and joyous and like things are good like I, yeah I don't have this dedicated fun routine so it's a it's pretty much a underlying constant feeling I have, if that makes sense. That's beautiful. I love that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so Thanks. you've dedicated your life to sharing your health journey. You put so much effort and care into getting your message out. What is your heart's desire for this world in doing all you do? Oh, wow. Oh, heart's desire. Just, I would love it. I would love to see everybody go fruit-based. Uh, it would make people feel amazing and realize just how amazing they're meant to feel as a human frugivore species, like help them realize that they're, they're innate birthright, you know, that's something that they're, they're meant to feel and they're not feeling. Most people aren't, they're feeling quite terrible mm -hmm. and they don't realize how good they don't realize how good they can feel. So I really want that for others to experience this. That's why I'm like, just try for 30 days. Eh? Mm. Uh, and for animals to be left alone, you know, for us to eat in a way that leaves animals alone and lets them live their life. 
without the fear of us coming and slaughtering them and exploiting them and destroying their families. And, you know, that's also very important to me. And that is part of my dream for this world is to have a world where animals are left to live their own life. Yeah. Where we leave them alone, where they're happy, they have their families and we eat this peaceful fruit-based diet because that's what it is. It's the most peaceful diet on the planet. And no animals have to be hurt, you know, indirectly, maybe, but like not directly. And I think that's a beautiful thing, right? That all sentient beings can coexist. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, there's carnivores. Obviously, there's carnivores. Right. We can't control that. Um, but we are not that species. You know, we are not a carnivore. We're not omnivorous. Sure, our behavior could be omnivorous. We, we eat, well, I don't, but you know, people obviously eating animals and surviving, but not thriving and often checking out from disease so it's not working for our species yeah. and we might be behavioral omnivores but we're not physiologically or anatomically it just does not work and there's evidence of that everywhere so yeah that's what i'm saying to try this diet try this lifestyle try it on for yourself don't take my word for it who am i just some random girl on the internet <laughs> you know you have to prove it to yourself and that's why i'm passionate that's why i put it out the message out there and um, it's my dream to have everyone to live as the frugivore that they're meant to live as, mm. to embrace a species-specific diet. It's true. Well, um, you're not just some random girl on the internet. You're a very special soul in God's name. <laughs> for a time as this, on purpose, for a purpose, and um, Thank you. a wonderful plan and purpose, because you, and you're doing that, and, and you're you're helping people, you're helping the animals, you're helping this planet, you're doing what you want to do and, and fulfilling your heart's desire. And that's beautiful. It takes courage, it takes strength, it takes tenacity and consistency and energy. Thank and you so, so much. Yeah, thank you for, for being here today with us and um, with me and with the- That audience. means so much to me. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for Thank you for approaching me. Like, I feel very grateful that you approached me for this opportunity and yeah to speak to yourself and your audience and I, like that's amazing and that you actually feel that way about me and you get why I do what I do and you can yes. see the positive impact over the years like that's that's amazing and it's great to connect with you and your audience thank you thanks so much for tuning in love Gianna and freely <laughs> <laughs>